Welcome back to my channel Pharma Discussion with Kaji. In today's lecture, we will discuss about quality control of pharmaceutical aerosol. This is the sixth part of aerosol system. Quality is the important factor for any dosage form, and the quality control is the essential way of ensuring the quality of the product. Now quality control test includes testing of propellants, test for valves, actuator and deep tubes, test for containers, weight checking, leak testing and spray testing. Now test for propellants, vapor pressure and density of the propellants are determined and compared with specification set. Identification of propellant is tested by gas chromatography and infrared spectroscopy. Purity and acceptability of the propellants are determined by moisture content determination, halogen determination and non-volatile residue determination. Now test for valve, actuator and deep tube. Sampling is done according to standard procedure as found in military standard, for example, MILSTD 105D. For metered dose aerosol valves, test methods were developed by Aerosol Specification Committee, Industrial Pharmaceutical Technology Section, and Academy of Pharmaceutical Sciences. The objective of this test is to determine magnitude of valve delivery and degree of uniformity between individual valves. Standard test solution were proposed to rule out variation in valve delivery. Now these are the uh, different compositions of test solution A, B and test solution C. In all these test solution isopropyl myristate is present in a concentration of 0.1% W by W. Propellant 11 is only present in uh, test solution C in a concentration of 24.9% W by W. Propellant 12 is present in a concentration of 49.95% W by W in test solution A, 25% W by W in test solution B and 50.25% W by W in test solution C. Propellant 114 is present in a concentration of 49.95% W by W in test solution A, 25% W by W in test solution B and 24.75% W by W in test solution C. Alcohol USP is only present in test solution B in a concentration of 49.9% W by W. Specific gravity of Test solution A, B and C at a temperature of 25 degree Fahrenheit are respectively 1.384, 1.092 and 1.388. Now test procedure. Take 25 valves and placed on containers filled with specific test solution. Actuator with 0.02 inch orifice is attached. Temperature minus 25 degree plus minus 1 uh, plus minus 1 Celsius is maintained. Valve is actuated to fullest extent for 2 second and weighted. Again the valve is actuated for 2 second and weighted. Difference between them represents delivery in milligram. Repeat this for a total of 2 individuals deliveries from each of 25 test units. So in, in summary, what is doing here is uh, in first valve actuation, if the weight is W1 and second actuation if the weight is W2, then the delivery will be W1 minus W2. 
ভালভ ডেলিভারি পার অ্যাকচুয়েশন ইন মাইক্রোলিটার ইকুয়ালস টু ইন্ডিভিজুয়াল ডেলিভারি ওয়েট ইন মিলিগ্রাম ডিভাইডেড বাই স্পেসিফিক গ্র্যাভিটি অফ টেস্ট সলিউশন নাও দ্য ভালভ অ্যাকসেপ্টেন্স ক্রাইটেরিয়া ইফ দ্য ডেলিভারিজ অফ ভালভ ইজ ফিফটি ফোর মাইক্রোলিটার অর লেস দেন দ্য অ্যাকসেপ্টেন্স লিমিট ইজ প্লাস মাইনাস ফিফটিন If the delivery is 55 to 200 microliter, then the uh, acceptance limit is plus minus 10%. Of that 50 individual deliveries, if 4 or more are outside the limits, then valves are rejected. If 3 deliveries are outside the limits, then another 25 valves are tested. Now lot is rejected if more than one delivery is outside the specification if two deliveries from one valve are beyond limits then another 25 valves are tested and the lot is rejected if more than one delivery is outside the specification now test for containers containers are examined for defects in lining Quality control aspects includes degree of conductivity of electric current as measure of the exposed metals. Glass containers examines for flaws. Next is test for weight checking. This is done by periodically adding to the filling line teared empty aerosols container which after filling with concentrate are removed and weighted. Same procedure is used for checking weight of propellants being added. Next is leak testing. It is a means of checking crimping of a valve and detect the defective containers due to leakage. This is done by measuring the crimes dimensions and comparing. Final testing of valve closure is done by passing the filled containers through water bath. Next is spray testing. Most pharmaceutical aerosols are 100% spray tested. This serves to clear the deep tube of pure propellant and pure con concentrate. To check for defects in valves and spray pattern. Next is evaluation test of aerosols. It includes flammability and combustibility, physicochemical characteristics, performance testing and biological testing. Now flammability and combustibility, it includes flash point testing and flame projection testing. Now flash point testing, the apparatus used is tag open cup apparatus. In this case, product is chilled to minus 25 degree Fahrenheit and test liquid temperature is allowed to increase slowly and the temperature at which vapors in ignite is called as flash point. Now flame projection. Product is spread for 4 seconds into a flame and the flame is extended exact length is then measured with a ruler. Next is physicochemical characteristics. It includes vapor pressure, density, moisture content and identifications of propellant. Vapor pressure is measured by pressure gauge or can puncturing device. Density is measured by hydrometer and pycnometer. Moisture content is measured by Carl Fisher method and gas chromatography method. Identification of propellant is tested by gas chromatography and infrared spectroscopy. Next is performance testing. It includes aerosol valve discharge rate, spray pattern, dosage with metered valves, net contents, foam stability and particle size determination. Now aerosol valve discharge rate, contents of the aerosol product of known weight 
is discharged for specific period of time. By reviewing the container after the time limit, the change in the weight per time dispensed give the discharge rate. In summary, if the initial weight of the aerosol container is W1 and after discharging a specific time that is uh, after 10 second if the weight of the aerosol product is w2 then aerosol valve discharge rate will be w1 minus w2 divided by 10 in gram per second next is spray pattern the method is based on the impingement of spray on piece of a paper that has been treated with ditalc mixture. The particle that strike the paper causes the dye to go into solution and to be adsorbed onto paper giving a record of spray for comparison purpose. Next is dosage with metered verbs. Reproduce, reproducibility of doses can be determined by assay techniques and a second method is accurate weighing of filled containers followed by dispensing of several doses. In assay techniques, specific amount is taken and can be determined by different analytical procedures. In second method, containers are then reweighted and a difference in weight divided by number of doses dispensed gives average dose. Next is net content. Two methods are there. In first method, teared cans that have been placed onto the filling line are reweighted and then difference in weight is equal to the net contents. In second method which is also known as restrictive method, weighing a full container and then dispensing as much as of the content possible, then the, then the contents weighted. This gives the net content. Next is foam stability. There are several methods of determining foam stability. These are visual evaluation, time for given mass to penetrate the foam, time for given rod that is inserted into the foam to fall and rotational viscometry. Next comes particle size determination. Two methods are there. First one is cascade impactor and second one is the light scattering decay. In cascade impactor, the principle is that stream of particles projected through a series of nozzle and glass slides at high velocity. The larger particles are impacted first on lower velocity and smaller particles are collected at higher velocity stage. Next is light scattering decay. The principle is that an aerosol settles under turbulent conditions. The change in the light intensity of a Tyndall beam is measured. Next comes biological testing. It involves two types of uh, testing. First one is therapeutic activity testing and toxicity studies. Therapeutic activity testing. For inhalation aerosols, doses of the product is determined and is related to the particle size distribution. For topical, topical aerosols, it is applied to test areas and adsorption of therapeutic ingredient is determined. Next comes toxicity studies. For inhalation aerosols, it is exposing, uh, exposing test animals to vapors spread from aerosol container. For topical aerosols, irritation and sealing effects are determined. The remaining parts of the aerosol system 
are described in different parts. In part 1, introduction and propellants are discussed and the YouTube link is provided here. In part 2, nomenclature and numerical problem solving on the propellant blends are discussed and the YouTube link is provided. In part 3, containers, valves and actuators are described briefly. In part 4, formulation of aerosols have been discussed. In part 5, manufacturing of aerosols have been discussed and in all these parts, YouTube links are provided. These are the references. Thank you for watching.